I'm on the road again, and there's two O days in the wild. Let's talk about them in the February patch report. Hello everyone, it is Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial patch wrangler. It is February patch Tuesday, I am on the road again, and uh, but fear not, I am still here to take a look at all these patches and see what we've got to talk about. We've got, we actually have two things I've never seen before, so that's exciting for me because I've seen a lot. Uh, but let's get straight into it and let's start with the Adobe stuff and let's just go ahead and address the uh, effluent in the room. The blog is having a moment. Uh, with its CSS and its design, we're working on it. Um, just bear with us, please. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so Adobe stuff, we've got uh, 45 CVEs and seven bulletins, Commerce, InDesign, Substance, Illustrator. Really, the one you need to pay attention to here is Commerce uh, by far. It is uh, a big one with 31 CVEs. And obviously, since you're dealing with Commerce, that's kind of where the money is at. So that's what you need to pay attention to. None of these are under active attack, all are priority three. So pretty reasonable update from Adobe. Now looking on at Microsoft, we have 57 new CVEs today. And all I can say is, whew, okay, thank goodness. Uh, after the last couple of months, a slow month, a, a smaller month is very welcome. Thank you, Microsoft. In the usual components, uh, Microsoft Windows, Office, Azure, you know, the usual. We've got two that are publicly known and two that are under active attack. And one is one that I've never seen in the wild before. And let's start with that. We have this Windows storage elevation of privilege vulnerability. If you look at the bulletin, it says you can delete a file. How does deleting a file lead to privilege elevation? Well, my colleague Simon Zuckerbron figured that out, wrote a blog about it. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes here. And show notes, oh, that sounds so fancy. In the notes below. And uh, yeah, it's I've never seen this in the wild before. So this is not the first time we've seen a bug like this patched. Obviously, we've seen other EOP bugs that start with a file delete. This is the first one we've ever seen used in the wild. Very cool uh, to me. I mean, I'm not getting attacked by it, but, you know, uh, the other one is AFD.sys. AFD does stand for exactly what you think it stands for, and it's not written here on this page. Uh, this is another EOP, and this, again, is going to usually be paired up with an RCE bug. So you're going to do codex. You're going to escalate privileges and then run code execution, take over a system. Uh, again, Microsoft doesn't tell us how widely these are being exploited. They just say uh, they're being exploited. Uh, next up, we've got an LDAP RCE, and this one is wild uh, because it's remote, it's unauthenticated, it's no user interaction, and it occurs with higher privileges, one, two, three, four, worm. So that adds up to wormable between LDAP servers, obviously, just you know if you're an affected LDAP server. Uh, Microsoft does list this as exploitation likely, so maybe we'll see something here. Maybe we won't. Um, I would still, if you're running LDAP and you probably are, I would test and deploy this one quickly. And there's so many Excel bugs to highlight. I just picked this one um, in, because the preview pane is listed as an attack vector for an Excel bug. But Microsoft lists the CVSS as user interaction required, and I am confused. I know I'm slow and dull of wit, but those things don't seem to match. But regardless, what they probably mean is you have to click preview in the preview pane on an Excel file, and that causes the code execution. Otherwise, you would just open a malicious uh, Excel file, and that would cause the code execution. It's one of those times where it's like, Microsoft, I wish you could just kind of explain it a little bit more clearly. Uh, the table's a mess, people. I'm sorry. Um, you know, if you want, leave me a comment. I'll, I'll post the table to Google Sheets or something, and, and you can still get that. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't want to bore you with reasons why. But, uh, yeah. So there's uh, only one real other critical bug right now, and that's a uh, code execution bug in DHCP server. That sounds really scary, but it's only to network adjacent attackers. Uh, and it re also requires a machine in the middle. So not really that scary. Uh, the other critical was one that Microsoft has already taken care of, and they're just documenting. Uh, you've got a lot of code execution bugs in this release. Again, a lot of Office and Excel bugs. I keep doing, I keep putting my hand up, and it blocks my light. I got a little light here. Uh, got to stop doing that. I'll, I'll stop being right-handed. Uh, so, 
We've got a lot of uh, Excel bugs that are being uh, fixed. Also on the Excel bugs, some of them require multiple patches. So make sure that you test and deploy all of the patches. Um, we also have a bunch in these older protocols, RS, telephony service. Man, I'm so tired of these bugs. I mean, yeah, they're real bugs, but they never get exploited. They're never seen in the wild. They're, they're silly bugs. Uh, you've got some privesks uh, beyond the ones that we've already talked about. Uh, one from my colleague, Simon Zuckerbron there, who describes it quite nicely. Um, and that's a, your classic link following uh, privilege escalation. So pretty good on that one. Um, most of them are just, you know, you get system. Uh, the bug in auto update is only the Mac OS version of auto update. So don't stress on that. You've got two security feature bypass bugs. And one of these is one I want to talk about because it's the one in kernel. And it's a bypass of the user, user account control, UAC. This is new. There have been bypasses of this thing forever. And Microsoft has always said, not a security boundary. So why are they fixing it now? Did they just make a very silent announcement that they're now going to fix all the UAC bypasses there are? Because if so, I'm here for you, brother. That's a lot. Uh, that's a major shift in policy. And I would love to hear anyone from Microsoft stand up and say, what's up? Just putting that out there. Uh, one info disclosure bug this month, and it's only heat memory. Uh, a few DOSes, again, there's not much we can see from the DOSes. Um, there's some spoofing bugs. Obviously, the Intel, NTLM spoofing means you're passing a hash. Um, spoofing bug in Outlook. This is really weird. It only impacts your junk folder. But you could have somebody on the, the send line that's not the person who sent the stuff to your junk folder but you can't pick who's the sent. It's a weird bug. Read it. Um, don't worry about it, but definitely, you know, deploy it. Uh, and then uh, if you're running Edge on iOS or Android, I really need you to rethink some things. But there's a spoofing bug in that as well. Uh, and that's it. There's no new advisories. There is an update to the servicing stack advisory, but that is all. And that is a small release, people. So a couple bugs being actively exploited. And uh, that new thing for UAC, which is wild. I, I think it's cool. Hey, next month, I plan on being back at my house. Who knows where I might actually be. But I will return on March 11th to talk about the latest and greatest security patches from Adobe, Microsoft, and more. Until then, stay safe, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.